Hello again and welcome to my uh, How the RSI Algorithm Works video. This is the second part, a second part of the series. Please go back and watch the first part if you haven't. There I explain the intuition behind the RSI Algorithm, how it works and the intu and the uh, why it is actually uh, special. In this video I'm going to give you a scenario where two, par or two, two parties or two entities want to exchange uh, secret or encrypted information. So let's assume that we have two ends, X and Y, two people, two computers, two machines wa that, that who want to uh, exchange secret information between themselves. Now, I'm going to be assuming that X is the sender and Y is the uh, recipient. So, if you remember, the idea of the public key is that the recipient publishes its pr public key the idea behind I'm sorry RSA is that the recipient publishes its private key and keeps the secret key to itself so now why is the recipient why publishes its public key which is the combination of N and E and sender X it obtains that public key and let's assume that X has for example a plain text message then what we do is we represent that plain text message as a positive integer m such that the value of m is larger than 1 and less than n always remember that the value of m of uh, the integer that we use to represent our original data needs to be larger than 1 and less than the value of n however if the integer we use for example people for example take text and use the ascii code uh, if we put ascii code next to each other three digits after three after three then if the value we get the whole value we get is larger than n then we can split it into smaller we can split m into smaller values and then use the sum for example of those values a anyway you need to find a way of breaking m down so such that m is always always larger than one and less than n so again x obtains y's public key which is n and e and then x represents the plain text that it wants to send it represents it as a positive integer m and the value of m is larger than 1 less than n and then what we do is x computes the ciphertext x basically encrypts m using the public key of y how that's done is as follows the ciphertext or the encrypted message now equals we raise m to power e and then compute modulo n so basically we raise n well, I'm sorry we raise m to power e and then we divide by n and get the remainder. The remainder now is the ciphertext, is the encryption of m. So c equals m to power e modulo n. And then we send that to y. Now at the other end, at y now, y receives that uh, 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 encrypted message. And what it does, because y now it has its private key, which is n and d, if you remember, then we just do the opposite that given m we raise I'm sorry given c c is the encrypted message now given c we raise c to power d and then we divide by n and the remainder will be m so again using the private key n and d y it raises c to power d and divides by n and the remainder will be m so m equals c to power d modulo n I hope this makes sense I know it's quite simple and the best way to explain it and cement it in your mind is by taking a real example although the numbers here are, qu are quite small because I just wanted to demonstrate how it works uh, with an example that you can use your calculator to uh, work through so let's assume that we pick up two random numbers two random prime numbers now P and Q and let's assume that we have P equals 3 and Q equals 11 remember and when you use RSA algorithm P will be extremely large and Q will be extremely large and N will be even larger because N is the result of P times Q multiplying P by Q. So N P I'm sorry P is three, Q is eleven, and now we um, we compute N which is P times Q. Three times eleven is thirty three. Now we compute phi because P and Q now are prime numbers. Then phi uh, which is 
the uh, final function of p times q equals p minus 1 times q minus 1. Remember my explanation of the final function and go back to the last video, the prerequisite slide for more explanation or go back to my YouTube channel and find my explanation of Euler's theorem and Euler's um, phi function. Now, p minus 1 times q minus 1 is 3 minus 1 times 11 minus 1 which is 2 times 10 which is 20. So the value of phi now is 20. Now we pick up e and d as we said before uh, with the conditions that we explained in the last uh, video. Uh, the conditions here for e and q e needs to be co-prime with phi I'm sorry e and d e needs to be larger than 1 less than phi and co-prime with phi and d needs to be larger than 1 and, and less than phi same for e but now d e times d needs to be congruent with 1 modulo phi and if you notice here we pick up e as 7 d as 3 and uh, you notice that for example 3 times 7 modulo 20 is actually 1 so these conditions if you notice E and D here these conditions are met yeah, the GCD for example of E and phi is 1 so the GCD of 7 and 20 is what? the GCD of what did we say E and phi yes where is it sorry yeah, the GCD of E and phi needs to be 1. Yes, I hope that makes sense. That's how we choose E and D. E needs to be larger than 1, less than phi. And E and phi are co-prime, so their GCD is 1. If we uh, look at our example here, E is 7 and phi is 20. The GCD of 20 and 7, you work that out and you'll find it's actually 1. They don't share any divisors apart from 1. And then likewise, we choose the value of d uh, according to this condition such that it's larger than 1, less than phi, and at the same time, uh, if we multiply e times d and then compute modulo phi, then the result, the remainder will be 1. So this, what this means is, you know, e times d is congruent to 1 modulo phi. What this means is that if we divide e times d, if we divide that by phi, then the remainder will be 1. So e times d modulo, uh, I'm sorry, e times d and we divide by phi, the remainder should be 1, so e times d e times d is 21 yes, 21 modulo 20 is actually 1, so that condition is met now what we have is, we have the pair of public key and private key, the public key is the pair of 7 and 33 and the private key is the pair of 3 and 33, so we keep the secret, we publish this imagine now that we want to send a message uh, and we are presented by the integer number 13 now remember, this integer needs to be less than n otherwise we break it down in, into smaller numbers now if we want to encrypt encrypt m then what we do is we raise it to power e and compute modulo n so we raise it to power e divide by n and take the remainder so c equals c is the, just for the cipher text c is for cipher so c equals m to power e modulo n c equals 13 to power 7 modulo 33 and the result will be 7 so the encryption of 13 using these numbers is 7 we send it at the other end we want to decrypt it so what we do is m equals c to power d mod modulo n so we raise c or we'll multiply c by itself d times divide by n and take the remainder c 7 to power 3 d now is 3 if you remember modulo 33 is actually 13 the same message let me use use the calculator quickly to show you how that actually works so these calculations are quite easy what we need to do now is raise 13 to power 7 so 13 power 7 and the result we compute mod modulo 33 and the result is 7 now to get it to get the original message what we do is we raise 7 to power d which is 3 at this moment and then we compute modulo n modulo 33 and we get 13 back as you can see here I'm going to stop here thank you very much again for watching and I'll see you in one of, in one of my next videos